it, buddy. It's one cold morning this morning. It's about uh, five below zero. Not that bad. It's fairly calm, so it doesn't seem quite so bad. So, anyways, I am going to take a little time and refill up my woodshed. As you can see, it's getting kind of low. And uh, I've had a few people talk, ask about these stoves. And uh, I will be filling here in a second. And you'll see it takes an awful lot of wood to fill these stoves. This is an awful big stove, too. Um, I replaced it this year, um, and it's, it's a lot bigger than the old one. But anyways, it takes a lot of wood, and it does a great job of heating my house and my dry kiln and my water, but it, it really sucks up the wood. I'm in the wood business, so it's not quite so big of a deal, but uh, it does, for those people that buy wood, it may not be the best way to go. Um, but for me, it seems to work great. So I will fill it up, and then we've got uh, um, some wood to cut. In case you're wondering, the noise in the background that you're hearing is my skid steer. So when the fire gets low, I will just stir up the ashes a little bit and I have some good dry slab wood. I'll throw in a couple ironfuls of good dry slab wood right on the coals and then I will put the big chunks in on top of that. This furnace is like 54 inches long, something like that. But I usually just cut my wood around 20 inches and I just stack one tier at the front side of the stove and that's usually all I put in. If it's really cold, I'll throw a few chunks behind that. But generally, I can just deal with just the one tier in the front. I burn a lot of basswood, which is actually, in my opinion, a very poor wood to burn. So I don't sell it to people to burn their stoves. I burn it myself. I have a kind of policy. I cut the best and sell the best and burn the rest. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. And a lot of it's quick dry, so it goes up pretty fast. So I just put some in there and I've got some good hardwood now to bring it to the shed. So that will hold the fire a lot better during these cold winters. So today I have Justin came down to help, which is great. He helps every morning for about an hour, like I told you in another video. But uh, quite often on Fridays, he gets to come out and help for at least a half a day. That's what he's going to help with today, which is great. So we'll get some of this wood cut and then go out and work on our cleaning our pond out and take the horses out. So anyways, here we are just cutting this wood up and uh, we'll get it in the woodshed for today.
before I forget, um, we need both the shovels and the horse farm. I want to explain one thing. This this is a sled that we keep right stored in here for our sleigh rides. But if you notice, and I'll have you go show it, we have the runners on boards that are on the ground so it doesn't freeze down. Okay, so we're gonna have her. We're gonna have uh, Justin drive today. A um, couple things. If you notice, um, let me just get off. If you notice, with with Buck, a uh, I don't know, a week or so ago, I was harnessing him up, and I pulled on the crouper, and one of the buckles broke right off. Luckily. I didn't end up on the ground like I have uh, at other times, but uh, I haven't got a fix yet. So it's no big deal. You can easily run without a Cooper. Um, I don't, you know, you don't really have to have a Cooper on, but I do like a Cooper. Um, so at some point I gotta run to the harness shop and get that fixed. So we're gonna have Justin drive today. Um, I actually have cut way back on the horse's grain. They've been pretty hyper for quite some time. And uh, Buck is still kind of hyper this morning, even without hardly any grain into him. But uh, he will settle down a lot faster. Hey, be good. And uh, so we'll see how things go. So this is the sled that we use for sleigh rides. It's nothing fancy. It's a, a double bob sled, meaning two sets of runners. The front one that, that uh, um, swivels for steering purposes and the back one and that's getting pretty ripe as you see I gotta take it to another Amish guy and have him redo it all at some point but this is a sleigh I think it's a 16 foot sleigh 14 or 16 foot sleigh um, we have seats on it and we have uh, cushions for the seats and we have a little step here for people to get on. We've got our shovels because today we're going to go down and clean off the pond. I got some good hired help today so uh, we'll get a lot done quick. So go ahead J Justin and let's roll out of here.
over again, but... Many hands makes work light. Um, it didn't take too long with the three of us working on this. The idea was to just get it cleaned off so when we get warmer weather, hopefully it will um, melt a little on top or, or and then refreeze smoother or we'll have to do something to flood it, which has always been a problem because there's no good water source right here but at least it's cleaned off and ready for what is to come. It didn't take too long. Jim and Justin were talking a lot about uh, what they could do to make a scraper so that the horses could scrape it off. It's a very shallow pond. We made it that way so that there was no um, worry about um, anybody falling through or anything. But, uh, Okay. Anyways, it still takes a lot of effort to get it cleaned off, so that's why they're, we're always in a discussion of what to do. Okay. Okay. Good for today. Okay. I don't very often get a get to take a sleigh ride. Nice to not have to be driving all the time. Drive in. 